And then something happening overnight that you don't want to miss. Make sure that you are looking up into the sky. We're talking really early in the morning. In fact, you might have to set your alarm to wake up to see this one in the middle of the night. But the moon is going to be turning red. Let's get to Ashley, who has a closer look at the total lunar eclipse that's taking place very soon, Ash. Yeah, coming off of last year's solar eclipse, now we have a total lunar eclipse on tap. And it's not every day that you can see a glowing red moon. And tomorrow morning on Pi Day, no less. So take a moment to look up at the night sky and take in the magnificent, magnificent sight of our moon, sun, and Earth all aligning, causing our moon to turn red. So here to tell us more about the lunar eclipse that is visible across North America is Dr. Barbara Cohen, NASA's senior scientist for lunar science and exploration. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I want to start off by just bringing up that this isn't necessarily a rare event, but it's also not common. Can you kind of talk about the frequency of this and how it stacks up to maybe its solar counterpart? Yeah, good morning, Ashley. I'm really glad to be here to talk with you about this. As you said, the a lunar eclipse occurs when the Earth, the Sun, and the Moon perfectly line up so that the Earth is between the Sun and the Moon. The Earth is blocking the sunlight from reaching the Moon. It's bending those solar rays, so it's like it's projecting a thousand sunsets, which is why the Moon is going to turn bright red during a total lunar eclipse. They're not totally uh, rare. Um, eclipses occur in seasons when those when we line up, the moon is slightly tilted away from uh, the plane of the earth and the sun. Um, so when they happen, they happen in seasons. Um, and so there'll be a solar eclipse. We were not gonna be able to see it from North America. Um, so North America right now is perfectly positioned for this total lunar eclipse. And it's the best position that we'll have for a total lunar eclipse until 2048. So even though it is gonna be early in the morning, it's gonna be just after midnight. Um, and the totality of the, of the whole uh, bright red moon will be from 2.30 to 3.30 in the morning, but it's well worth your time to stay up late or get up early or set your alarm for the middle of the night. Go take a look at the total lunar eclipse. Absolutely. And what I find fascinating is you have about an hour window to take that in, which is a big difference from what we had with the solar eclipse last year. That window was much more tight. Why is that? That's because the moon is very much smaller. So the moon doesn't take up as much space um, in between when it's in between the sun and the earth. The sun is very big compared to the small moon. Um, on the other side, which is where the moon is, is now on the other side of the earth. The earth is very much bigger than the moon and so it casts a very large shadow, which is why the moon will appear to go into the earth's shadow and then come out the other side. And it takes it about an hour to do that. I mean, just spectacular. Now, NASA has a mission that's orbiting the moon right now. Can you give us more detail on that mission in particular? Yes, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter is in orbit right now around the moon. It's been there for about 16 years. It's a workhorse for our planetary science missions, understanding the global moon, understanding it from equator to pole, um, collecting data about the changes that are happening on the lunar surface now, landslides and new impacts, volatiles at the poles, harboring water at those deep craters at the lunar poles. And of course, everything that we do at NASA is exploring space for the benefit of people on Earth. That's helping us understand how to keep astronauts safe as we move out into the sphere of the solar system. Now those images are spectacular. I think it's really neat that this falls technically on Pi Day, given that it'll be early tomorrow morning. Is there any uh, significance or connection on how astronomers and mathematicians use Pi when it comes to, um, you know, the lunar eclipse and forecasting all of that? So it's a kind of a coincidence that this lunar eclipse happens on Pi Day. It's also my birthday, so big oh, celebration overnight. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but Pi is a really important mathematical number to us. It's a mathematical constant. It's the ratio of the circumference of circle to its diameter. You can go out and sketch the moon tonight. You can sketch the full moon and then take it, take your sketch inside and measure the circumference and measure the diameter, and you can derive Pi yourself. That helps us uh, as in trigonometry. It helps us understand the orbits of the planets it does help us predict when eclipses will happen. I can already see it now. The math teachers having a project in store for the next 24 hours for the kids. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Cohen, and enjoy not only the spectacular eclipse, but your birthday as well. 
Thanks, and don't forget to go to science.nasa.gov moon where you can find more information on this eclipse and on our wonderful science assets exploring the moon. Awesome, thank you so much.